Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine and in this video we're going to explore the differences and similarities between a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. At the time that this is being filmed in 2021, there happens to be a lunar eclipse that's happening towards the end of May, and then a solar eclipse that's happening in early June. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to explore the differences between the two. Now, most people have seen a lunar eclipse at some point in their lifetime. It's much easier to see a lunar eclipse than it is a solar eclipse. And we'll explore why that is throughout this video. But I wanted to just make sure you understand the differences at why these things occur to begin with and how they really are somewhat connected because they're both eclipses. So a lunar eclipse is when the moon passes through the Earth's shadow, and this only occurs at night during the full moon. It's longer in duration than a solar eclipse and it occurs more frequently. This is because Earth's shadow is much broader than the moon's shadow. And when we look at a solar eclipse, it's really the moon's shadow that's being projected onto the Earth. So there's two different types. You can have a total lunar eclipse or a partial lunar eclipse. And what's great about these is that they're safe to look at. You don't need any eye protection when you're looking at a lunar eclipse. If we take a look at a diagram of a lunar eclipse, we can see that the moon is passing through the Earth's shadow. And there's two different parts to Earth's shadow. You have the umbra, which is the darker portion, and then the penumbra as well. I do like this diagram because it just gives you a different angle as to how we're looking at the lunar eclipse and you can see that throughout the time in which the moon is starting to pass through the shadow of the earth we have the penumbra right here and then this is the umbra and we see more lunar eclipses because the earth's shadow is much larger and broader than the moon's shadow and we'll learn about how the moon's shadow falls upon the earth during a solar eclipse I do like this picture here as well because it shows you the progression of a lunar eclipse. We first start with the full moon and then this is where the eclipse is starting. It's continuing as we go down this way and then we come into the full eclipse when we get into this orangish color. Keep in mind that there's another total lunar eclipse coming up on May 26 on 2021. This is called a super blood moon and it's visible from parts of Australia, the Pacific Islands, some of some of the areas in the Americas as well as East and South Asia. Now we'll take a look at some of the characteristics of a solar eclipse. A solar eclipse is when the moon covers the sun and it can only be seen in the daytime. This is the opposite of when you can see a lunar eclipse. The moon's narrow shadow casts this pathway along Earth and we'll take a look at some diagrams of that soon. But it's a good thing to keep in mind that it's unsafe to look, to look directly at a solar eclipse. You need eye protection. A solar eclipse is also only visible within a narrow pathway along the Earth, and this makes it more challenging to see a solar eclipse. I myself has never truly seen a solar eclipse, so I think the time that I had a great opportunity was like literally like bad weather when I was a kid. Um, but my hope is at some point in my lifetime I'll be able to travel to a part of the globe where a solar eclipse will be happening and along that narrow pathway. So if we take a look at this diagram, you can see the arrangement of the sun, moon, and earth. The moon covers up the sun and it casts this narrow shadow along a pathway on earth. And keep in mind that because the moon's shadow is much narrower, that's why we don't see as many solar eclipses, or why it's harder to see them, I should say. Generally, there's about two per year of both lunar and solar eclipses, but that does vary from year to year. So we have our sun, and what happens is the moon covers the sun. Here's another picture of how this arrangement works with the sun, the moon, and the earth. And you can see that the shadow of the moon is just narrower, so it limits where you can see a solar eclipse. I've got a few diagrams that shows you, um, this is taken from NOAA and uh, the International Space Station combined with data there, and you can see 
that this that the shadow of the earth is or excuse me the shadow of the moon is just traveling along this narrow pathway so only people in this pathway would be able to see it here's another great diagram that shows how that shadow is cast upon this pathway so people that are in this pathway right here would only be able to see the solar eclipse so you can see in this particular portion i mean it's over the ocean for a good portion of this and i love this shot as well this is a picture of a solar eclipse from the viewpoint of the international space station so this right here is the shadow of the moon that's cast upon the earth and there are different predictions and maps that you can look up that show you a total and lunar eclipse path so these are very helpful because you can know exactly where you should be when a solar eclipse is going to happen if you want to see one like i said it's really a goal in my lifetime to see a total solar eclipse one like this now uh, it may not look as spectacular as this because this is um, obviously taken with a really fantastic camera um, with different filters on it so you can see um, different things but what I love about a total solar eclipse is that you are able to see features of the Sun that you wouldn't necessarily be able to see otherwise and that would be the corona so all this area right here is the corona of the Sun you can also see the chromosphere which is like kind of right down here this orange piece um, you can see that as well and you're only really able to see those during a solar eclipse Keep in mind that you do need eye protection for a solar eclipse. You should never look directly at the sun. There's also different types of solar eclipses as well. There's a partial solar eclipse, and that's when the moon only partially blocks part of the sun's disk. And then you also have an annular eclipse. This is also called a ring eclipse. And this is when the moon is too far away to completely cover the sun's disk. And this is actually going to happen in 2021. In, on June 10th in 2021, will there be an annular eclipse? This is when um, it, it won't be visible from everywhere on the globe, as I said, because it's a narrow pathway that the eclipse travels from, but it will be seen from the North Pole, northern parts of Canada and Russia, and there's some areas in North America that you'll see a partial eclipse. The next total solar eclipse um, in the United States, which is where I live, um, is in 2024. So perhaps I'll be making plans to go see that one as well. In all of my Versus videos, I like to use a Venn diagram to show the similarities and differences between the two things that I'm comparing. So we're going to do that for a lunar and solar eclipse. So they're similar in the sense that they're both celestial events. They're both classified as eclipses because one object is covering another object in the sky. And then it also is an occurrence that happens because of the arrangement of the Earth, Sun, and Moon system. Now, they're different in the sense that the Moon is in the Earth's shadow for a lunar eclipse. So the Moon appears darkened and sometimes it has that burnt orange color to it. It's also longer in duration. From start to finish, it can take between one and a half to two hours. It's also much easier to see because the shadow of the Earth is larger. Now, a solar eclipse is different because the shadow of the moon is on the Earth's surface. So the moon is eclipsing the sun. It's also shorter in duration. It only lasts about eight minutes. And it can be challenging to see because you need to be in the path of totality. So I hope this was helpful for you to know the difference and how a lunar eclipse happens and how a solar eclipse happens and how they're both similar and different. They're similar because they're eclipse events. Generally, they happen about twice a year and they happen because of the sun, earth and moon orientation to each other. They're different because of the variation of that position of the sun and earth and the moon. And it's also different in terms of the time and day you can view them. Remember that a solar eclipse is viewed during the day. You need eye protection to see it, where a lunar eclipse is viewed at night at the full moon and you're safe to look at it without eye protection. Also, the duration of it is different as well. So I wish you luck being able to see 
the annular eclipse if you happen to live in that area of the globe and hopefully you get to see the total lunar eclipse that's happening in may as well thank you as always for watching i really appreciate all the support and comments that you guys leave on this channel so if you have any questions or comments leave them in the space below good luck seeing a solar or lunar eclipse at some point in your lifetime and remember it takes time patience time patience and practice when viewing the night sky so keep going outside spend time in nature and as always keep looking up if you're new to this channel be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications about all new videos if you'd like to learn about the sky in greater detail be sure to visit my website i've got some freebies for you to download as well as online lessons and classes for you to experience so be sure to check them out